Hello YouTube world, it's Hey Keisha from Life Exchange. So today I will be talking about Matthew 22, 37 to 29. Love thy neighbors as thyself. Stay tuned. So before I get into this scripture, I chose the scripture because of an encounter that I had about probably about um, 12 years ago two, in two separate um, scenarios with meeting Muslims. And the first one was I was working at this place, American Express. So I was working at American Express. And I wasn't driving at the time. I lived about a, an hour to two hours away from where this call center is. I was taking the bus to work and I was taking the bus from work. My hours at the time was 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Now, getting home after work from 12 a.m., I usually get home about, say, 2 o'clock in the morning, which is late. And I'm a woman and... It was scary, it was fearful, and at the time, I grew up in the church, so I know to depend on God, but I didn't have a relationship with God. I probably did have one, but I didn't have it with understanding. I didn't have that wisdom of understanding. I remember there was a guy that I was working with, and I found out that he literally passed the street that I live on, and he drive to work. I've asked him for a ride a couple of times, and you know, some of my coworkers was asking him, probably you can give her a ride home at least in the night and you know i decided to give him some money for gas so he can drop me home so at least i don't have to get home four hours late from driving i believe it was about 30 to 30, 30 to 45 minutes but he literally passed my street and this is a black guy he's a jamaican guy and myself i am a jamaican so he gave me a ride a few times. He, he dropped me home a few times. Sometimes I think he, you know, people will do stuff for you for a limit amount of time. And after a while, they're tired. They don't want to do it. They have things to do, but they don't know how to say it to you. And I would have preferred for that guy telling me, you know, Keisha, I can't drop you off tonight or next week because I'm not going that direction. I'm going somewhere else. So if you want to get yourself another ride or you know find someone to pick you up then that will be great and when i have when i'm back on that route or that route i will be able to um give you a ride home but no he would hide and either leave out before um i finish working or leave out a little bit or we both work the same shift but he'll try to leave out so that he doesn't have to give me a ride or i don't know if he stay back a little bit late so he doesn't have to give me a ride but now I cannot stay walking around looking for him because the way the bus runs or I get the last bus the last bus run around 12 30 and that's 12 30 a.m and so I had to walk from where the call center is located to the main street which is about 15 minutes of walk imagine at 12 a.m in the morning walking there as a woman by myself and I have to stand up there in the dark because it was dark it was like a country area so it was dark out there and I have to stand out there by myself until the bus comes it was scary but you know what when I'm scared I used to just sing and then sing once a traveler I was wandering down the road rough it. so I would just sing that song when I'm when I have fear upon me or I'm scared of something. So I would just walk and sing and repeat that song over and over and over. But one day I was going home and as I was about to walk out of where the office is into the main street, um, this guy, he stopped and he asked, he's like, Keisha, where are you going? I can, I can, he asked his mom if she will be able to drop me to the main street. Now this is a Muslim guy and his mom is Muslim. And he asked his mom if she could drop me to the main street and she said yes. I got into the car. When they got to the main street, the mother speak in her language. I don't think she speak perfect English or probably she doesn't think I would understand her. I, I have no idea, but he, she spoke to him in her language 
and he turned to me and he said Keisha my mom says she's not comfortable leaving you out here by yourself she wants to know if it's okay for her to take you to the subway station because at least there's a lot of people coming and going so I said okay no problem thank you tell your mom thanks and I sat there quietly and then as we got closer to the subway station he she spoke something again into her language and said it to him and he goes Keisha my mom said that she would be more comfortable take you home to drop you home now this Muslim mother and son lives they live in the area close to where the um, the call center is which is they're going out of their way so I live in the north they live in the east and they're going out of their way an hour and a half to two hours out of their way to drop me home and when he said that my mom said she's not going to feel comfortable leaving you at the subway station. She's just going to take you straight to your house. Tears fell from my eyes because this was about, this happened in 2012 of spring and 9-11 was, as you know, September 11, um, September. Was it 2000? It was less but I know that it was um, probably months after 9-11. Months, like about six months, four months or so after 9-11. People, the media and racist people put plant thoughts in our mind and in our head or fear into our head to be scared of other people, other people's religion. If you don't believe the same thing as what they believe, they put fear in your head, they're going to do the worst thing to you and I literally cried because these are Muslim people I am a Christian and she was not safe she didn't feel safe leaving me out on the street she had to go out of her way to drop me on and from then I started thinking differently because honestly I see a Muslim person and I take the other street because the media builds fear, the government put fear into our mind. And again, I'm using the word fear. They put fear into our minds because again, that's the weapon that the devil uses. It's a spirit that the devil used to control us. And I got home that night safely. But it makes me realize that you cannot judge people. You cannot judge people religions. You cannot listen to what people say about other people. Get to know people yourself. My second encounter with another Muslim was when I was doing my other YouTube channel and I got reached out by a store. I was their ambassador. So they gave me a card that I would use in the store to purchase anything in the store at 50% off. The only thing that I need to do in return is to make sure that I do alls on my um, channel and show whatever I purchase and to post whatever I purchase onto my Instagram page. So that was what all they asked of me. So I used to shop there a lot, it's 50% off. And I remember the day I went there and I picked up some stuff and I was in the line and there was this Muslim couple in front of me. It was an husband, a wife, and I believe it was a baby girl or a baby boy. I'm not sure. I'm more leaning to a baby girl. And the husband, I guess he brought, he took his wife shopping and he bought a whole bunch of stuff for his wife. He bought some stuff for the kid. And there was one Tommy Elfiger jacket that he had in his hand because he wasn't sure if he wanted to buy it as he was cashing it out i guess um i guess the amount that he wanted to spend at the time at the store he was go going over the limit so he decided not to take the jacket his wife insists that he should take it because she loves it and it looks great on him and they're bickering going um, back and forth and she decided he was like no i didn't you know, I didn't bring enough money or I didn't budget for this. It's going to take me over my budget. So she said, okay, I can leave a couple of my tops and so that you can buy your jacket. And he goes, no, no, I brought you here to shop for you and shop for my daughter. I don't want you to, um, to leave anything. You, I want you to have 
these this is what I, why I came here not to get anything for myself and then she's like well I really like it and they were just going back and forth so the cashier at the time said you know what I am going to call the manager and see if I will be able to get a discount so at least you'll be able to get it because your wife really wants you to have this jacket and I stood in line behind them listening to the conversation and then after I said to the cashier I'm like I know I'm not supposed to be doing this but do you mind if I use my card so that he can get 50% off? And she's like, wow, this is like, that's really nice of you, Keisha. So they cash out, I believe, whatever, everything came up for him was about a little bit over 300 or close to 300. I do not remember because this is a while back. And as she cashed it out, I gave her my card and it came to 100 and probably say $60 and some change. And then he was in was amazed and he was like wow and he was like thank you thank you. and he goes to me I wish I could hug you but because of my religion I can't so I'm just gonna ask my wife he goes I'm just gonna ask my wife to give you a hug and his wife gave me a hug so while they were packing their stuff into their bags and stuff putting their stuff away and getting their stuff ready the cashier was cashing out my things and mine, I believe, probably came to about 100 and something dollars, but together it came to about 50 something, like $55, close to $60. And while I was going into my wallet now, my bag, to take my money out or my card out to, make, to pay for my purchase, the cashier already put through the purchase, like put through um, something. So I'm like, no, 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 I'll pay for it. And then the cashier is, and then he, the husband, the Muslim man insists, no, I get this. You did this for me, I have to do something back for you. And he basically paid for whatever. And we look at each other and it was like such an amazing time. My heart was filled with joy that I was able to do this for this Muslim couple. He turned around and was able to pay out whatever I purchased. In saying that, do not, I try my best not, I look at people, like your neighbor does not have to be someone that literally lives beside you. Your neighbor can be anyone from any country. You should love people the way that you want to be loved. And the scripture here says, the scripture Matthew 22, 37 to 39. The gospel of Matthew record Jesus' answer. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first great, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbors as thyself. And I honestly look at Muslim differently. Not all Muslim are the same. Not all Muslims or evil not all muslims are bad there are some with good heart and needless to say you should just love everyone with all thine heart the way that you'd like to be loved in return so that's my story i hope you guys have a great day a great week and a great month see you in my next video <music>